I'm Ben. Um, some of you may have seen me on Discord before, or if not, um, just as a quick intro, I've been working here at VoiceFlow for close to four and a half years now, I think, possibly. Has it been that long? Um, had a bunch of different roles, but very involved in the front end and yeah. specifically uh, wrote most of the React chat library that we're going to be kind of talking around today. Um, so that's that's a bit of my uh, backstory, I suppose, before I jump into it. Um, React Chat, the library that we're we're looking at right now. So I've got the uh, the GitHub page pulled up here. Um, so this is uh, basically a a mono repo with two pieces to it. So a mono repo in the sense that there are multiple different packages or libraries or other kinds of applications uh, inside of this code base, um, and those are actually housed inside of this packages folder. And those are the React Chat, named the same as the repo, and the widget. So the React chat is basically the library portion of this. This is what's responsible for all of the components that are used to actually construct the uh, the chat, the web chat front end. So I'm sure all of you are familiar, but if I go to you know, creator.voiceflow.com, for example, and open up the, the chat experience that we have there, each of the individual components that are used to construct this, so this like avatar info, these individual message bubbles, the overall kind of like container that this is in the header, all of that is defined as individual components. So this is pretty typical for uh, modern React um, development. You're building a component library and then using the, that component library to essentially assemble, compose together the, uh, the actual experience that you want your users to interact with. This entire library was designed with that in mind from the beginning. Um, with that in mind from the beginning. And what I mean by that is that we have designed this library in a way where anyone should be able to pick up and use the library directly should they so uh, choose. Like if they want to get really low level in how they want to customize the experience of the web chat, then it is available as a React like NPM package, NPM voice flow React chat. So someone can just grab that, you know, pull that into their existing React project and start using those components directly. Um, the components, again, if you ever want to kind of take a look at them, there is a quick way to access our storybook here by visiting the voiceflow.github.io uh, slash react chat, basically the GitHub pages for this same repo, which is linked on the repo itself. And that takes you to the storybook component library. So this is basically a, a, a way to browse through all of the different pieces that are built inside of that library, you can see ways of modifying them. So if you want to understand better, you know, what are the different properties that I can change on my assistant info component, for example, in order to get it to look different ways, you can go in and you can make all of these changes live whoops, and see what the uh, outcome is immediately. Uh, and that goes all the way to, you know, more complex things like an actual like full layout of all of these different message types in a scroll with the header and everything, kind of the experience that you might actually see rendered. If you were to, let me see if I can hide this. If you were to go, oh, no, that didn't hide it. Um, there we go. Uh, if you were to go to the React chat and look at it uh, today. So that's, um, that's what the React chat pack package is responsible for, is this library with all these components, all of the kind of functionality and user experience behind the web chat. And then we have the widget. Now, this is responsible for taking all of that library and binding it to your actual website. So this is responsible for the code that fetches all of your um, all of the components from the library, essentially, what gets bundled from that React chat package. It's responsible for communication. Uh, I'll show the kind of architecture in a second, but essentially because the React chat uh, widget gets rendered inside of an iframe, you need to set up some kind of like specific uh, communication, like a message bus essentially between that iframe and your actual website so that the two can communicate. And the like very small, simple snippet that you drop onto your website is still able to set up this full widget and like uh, send back and forth any messages that it may need to. Um, so the the widget itself uh, is pretty simple because it's not like a, a thousand different components. It's really just a little bit of glue to bootstrap everything together. Um, and what the kind of final result of all of this looks like is something like this, where someone 
has their their website, whether you're using, you know, the production snippet that we provide um, through voiceflow.com. That's if I, you know, go to my integrations page and copy this snippet here. Uh, you can do it that way, or you can do it with kind of a modified version of this snippet should you choose to actually deploy your own version of the React chat library and all that good stuff. Either way, the kind of end version of this is something where you take that JavaScript snippet and you put it on your website. So you're going to add it to some HTML page that you have access to. Um, if we inspect that snippet a little bit, we can kind of get a sense of what's actually happening here. It is pretty simple. So basically, we're just telling it to load a specific project through the window voice flow chat interface or API that we kind of uh, inject um, from this script here. But we're basically calling that load function and saying, here, I want you to load a specific project ID. I want you to use this URL for the runtime. So basically where all of the requests will be sent to our voice flow side whenever the user's interacting with your bot. And then the version that you'll be using, which in most cases is going to be production, but in some cases might be development or something else if you want to test out slightly different uh, versions of your, of your voice flow project. Um, so that's all pretty simple. Basically, it waits on the window loading or uh, waits on this element that it created loading. And then once it loads, it makes this call. The other piece is just setting up the actual script source for that same component for that same element. So we're pointing it at our CDN at our bundled widget file. Um, and that's pretty much it. So we're just adding a new script tag. We're pointing that script tag at our widget bundle that we have pushed to our CDN. And then once that script has executed, which means that this window voice flow chat will be available, then we call the load uh, function that's registered on that to basically set up our project. So the script tag is very small, but all it's really responsible for is loading the widget. The widget does the more complicated bootstrapping of like adding an iframe to your page, setting up the message bus between that iframe and the uh, basically this snippet, the website itself. Um, and a, a little bit more kind of lifecycle management, event management stuff. But basically, that JavaScript snippet is mostly just responsible for pulling in this widget bundle MJS file. So this is what's pushed to our CDN when you um, build and publish the React Chat library. We publish this bundle MJS file from our widget, which contains all of the uh, all of the files inside of this source directory here. So configuration, some hooks, some other logic and stuff like that. It takes that and now it pulls that in and uh, adds this as a script tag. So this script tag now introduces the iframe to the page. So you can see we now have an iframe that gets added down here. This iframe is going to be a reference that uh, a reference also to our CDN here. Um, so basically inside of the iframe, if I inspect this page here, see inside of the iframe so you can see here's where the iframe starts on the page and basically everything that's contained within it is everything inside of that react chat experience so you can almost think about this as if it's a completely separate web page just being shown inside of a portal inside of your website and so that's again why we need that message bus that the widget sets up to have basically those two different websites communicate um so we have the the iframe that gets rendered. It has all of the React chat inside of it. So that's this piece here. And then the other part, again, that I mentioned is setting up a message bus so that these two pieces can now communicate. So that's how your uh, load method that you call here, um, that you call is back in the code here. That's how this load function that gets called here actually has an effect on the contents of that iframe because this load function is just a wrapper around a call to that message bus. The message gets pushed into the iframe. The iframe can now react to that message and now loads the, the project as necessary. So all of that is already using that message bus whenever you call a method on that uh, voice flow chat API that gets exposed. So now we have our iframe and our iframe, as I mentioned before, is basically a portal that includes these three um, static files that we've generated. So similar to how the widget, uh, we generate this bundle MJS artifact for the React Chat library, we generate not just a bundle MJS uh, 
file, but also some styles. So all of the CSS basically required to style that React uh, that web chat. Um, and then an index HTML file, which is basically what's going to be returned um, when we render this uh, iframe here. So if I actually just copy this link address and visit that, and I take a look at the network request for that, and I look at doc, uh, I think I should be able to see it. Maybe not. Okay, well, I guess I can just curl this so we can see what it looks like. Um, cool. So here we can see the HTML file that gets generated essentially super simple. It's just pulling in the styles, pulling in the script file, and then applying some kind of like global styling here, but super, super simple. And it really just ties those three, uh, bundled assets together so that they can be rendered as a page. And so that's basically everything that happens to set up your widget. Once your widget is set up, then it's going to be interacting with the voice flow runtime, which is again, that, uh, that URL that we showed here. So you can potentially change this, you know, maybe for our purposes, we have different runtimes on different environments. So it's useful for us to point it in different places, but in general, um, uh, unless you're working off of a private cloud or something like that, which I don't think anyone here is. Uh, you won't need to actually change that URL to anything. Um, but that's basically going to be the API that at that point on that web chat is conversing with. So it will send a request to our runtime with, you know, here's the message that the user typed and get a response back, including all of the uh, response messages that our system wants to say back to the user. And that's basically it at a high level. That's how the kind of architecture for React Chat, the widget, how all those things come together. 